Hey guys, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the spiral and we're going to talk about the hinging. Um, but first of all, I'd like to say that I, I like to do things that happen naturally in the golf swing. I don't like to fight uh, what happens naturally. So uh, just with the setup, I've had some questions about ulnar deviation and, and stuff like that and how the wrists actually work in my golf swing. <clears throat> so basically, if you just get in a decent posture and you just take your arms and let them go right there, relax everything, relax your arms, your wrists, your hands, look at that position they go in. Gravity takes it right there. Okay, I'll get even closer. See that? I'm not in a, a radial deviation, uh, actually going against gravity when I do that. I'm just letting them fall into that position because at impact, the forces will work to the outside and they will go in that position. So not only does this a natural thing for me, it allows me to hinge. When I hinge this wrist, and I've showed you many times, the back of that hand goes right up that forearm. Doesn't matter if I have it straight up and down, I hinge. If I'm out here, I hinge. It's going right with that forearm. What happens when you do this, the forces line up. Okay, a shot with a lot of velocity, I would spiral up the plane, down it, but my hand will go up the plane, down it, the, the shaft comes right behind it, the club head is right behind that, and it all follows that line into impact. And this club is working from inside to out, and around and back up that plane. Okay, that's where a lot of people mess up. They'll lift the club right here and just swing to the left, okay? There's speed in that, you can hear it. There's a lot of speed in that. Some people will take it to the inside and swing out to right field. We've talked about a lot of this in, in channel lock where it's inside, out there, okay? A lot of speed in that. What I'm doing, I'm using this spiral and the hinge I'm talking about. I'm going up the plane, down it and back out the other side. Three phases to it. For a shot that requires a lot of velocity, you need all three phases. If you do this, the speed is just incredible when you do it. Um, so we'll do a little test right here. I may get wet doing this, but if you're, if you're working on that plane and you're swinging inside to out, the forces will go all the way out to the end of that club head. They're going to work to the outside. So I've got a little water here, okay? I'll swing it up the plane, and do, do the hinging that I do, and the water should stay where, it, where it's at. Okay? All right, no water. So everything is lined up. Those forces are lined up. Um, so if I... Let's say I lift the club or um, I fold my arm or do something like that. Let's see what happens. I'll, I'll do the fold first, okay? Right off the bat, everything is out of line when I do that. I'm out, outside of that spiral that I'm trying to create and uh, there's gonna be problems with that. So I want those forces to line up. So it serves critical. It, it's, it serves with the width of my swing. It serves with the uh, low point of my swing. Um, that's, that's what allows me to be consistent. It gives me my power. It keeps the club on plane. I don't have to fight this club face and roll my forearms or do anything silly. And if you notice when you hinge, like I'm showing you, there's none of this business right here where the club face rolls open. Okay, none of that. That is what destroys a lot of golf swings. You get that club face open, you, you've got to get it back square to impact. And you're, you're going to be in a constant state of trying to catch that club face up. I just use the forces that are natural. It goes up and around. I don't have to think about squaring it. I don't have to think about any of that stuff. It just, it happens. I let the forces do that for me. So uh, there is a adaptive hinge and I'm gonna show you that. 
we'll talk a little bit about the adaptive hinge. And uh, so shots that, that don't require a lot of velocity, um, a lot of spiral, you can certainly adapt this hinge to different shots. If I had a putter uh, that's a little bit more upright, you still see there's a little bit of an angle in the shaft plane right there. I'm, I'm still lining up those forces with that forearm and there. If I was to have a little pop stroke or hinge and hold it through there or however I decide to put, I'm lined up on that plane. So I, I gain a good bit of control over that. And uh, you line up those forces, it's going to be a lot more solid. Same way with a, uh, in my short game, you know, I talk about standing the handle up a little bit and having the toe, the only thing that comes in contact with the ground. If you have a super firm lie, super soft lie, you're not gonna bounce off the turf and you're not gonna dig. So people that, that have this angle and they go elevated and they go down, they're more likely to dig with the heel of the club, okay? And you're gonna find, um, you're gonna have trouble, especially in your short game. You might get away with it with a long game but in the short game, it is definitely going to cause some issues. So, um, especially if the turf is firm, you're more prone to bounce into the ball and hit it. If it's soft, you're more prone to dig, and you're going to have a variation of strike on the club face. So you're going to have trouble with your distance control. I know this because I used to be that player. I was extremely steep with large divots, and I would always get intimidated by uh, different types of turf and how the ball was sitting. And I could never be as consistent as I wanted. I was still a good player. In the long game, it didn't hurt me too much. But it really showed its face in the short game, in the finesse game. But if I stand that handle like that, I can adapt it to that. See that? Same thing. So I can hit little shots right here. I can get a little bit closer to it, hit little pitch shots. I can turn it around, go this way. I can hinge towards you if I had a tree over here and I didn't want to hit the tree. I could just take it right there, hinge up. All right, right down the fairway. Uh, if I'm in the deep rough, I'll set the ball down. I'll take, a, I'll take a divot with this. I'll hinge it up, hinge it up sooner. Get steeper, because I don't want a lot of grass caught between this and the ball. This ball's setting down pretty deep right there. Ball comes out beautifully doing that. You can be a guy, you can be like Bryson DeChambeau. He hinges it way up here at the top, a late hinge. Some guys will hinge it on the downswing and create more of that hinge on the downswing. It is totally up to the player individually. Um, as long as you're on that plane and you're lining up the forces, you're gonna be good, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be able to get away with a lot of different things. And uh, I would just play around with that, experiment with it. Uh, I'm more of a capital Y and let it hinge naturally at the top. But I can, I can do this. Great shot right down the middle. So it works in a whole array of different situations okay uh, i'm always matching it to whatever the plane of this club is no matter if it's driver if you notice i'm never reaching for the ball so just keep that in mind we'll catch you next time